Um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Alicia Frozzi, I'm from virtualization team uh, in Red Hat and I mostly work on storage topic and as already Andrew said, uh, I am going to present uh, value migration. So first of all, what is uh, volume migration? Um, so for volume migration, we mean a full copy of the storage while the VM is running. Um, so we are talking about shared storage, but also uh, about local storage. Um, what this feature is not about is uh, live migrating the VM using local storage. So if your VM is using read write one species, you still encounter the restriction that you cannot live migrate your VM. So for what is this feature useful for? Um, so in general, if you need to uh, change your uh, um, storage class, so for example, if your VM is using a storage class that has been deprecated, or on the other side, if there is a more performance storage class available and you want to take advantage of it, maybe that has you know, more feature. Um, or maybe if you want to move from file system BBC to block. Another nice use case is when you want to replace the um, underlying uh, hardware. So for example, um, if, your, if your hardware needs some refresh, maybe if there is something broken. Um, and of course, you want to perform all these operations without uh, any workload interruption. So you want to keep your VM still running. So this is a virtualization feature in API. And I would like to explain uh, why. Um, so we would love to have Kubernetes support for this, but there are um, two major restrictions that, that didn't allow us to, to, to use directly um, Kubernetes and CSI. So uh, first of all, Kubernetes is um, very static, especially when it regards the storage. So basically, Kubernetes doesn't allow us to have light changes on the pod volume set. So if you want to, for example, um, we know that for our plug, so when you want to basically modify your volume, this is not possible. So either you create a pod or you need to use a second pod that has a copy. It's basically a copy of your existing pod with the modified volume set. So the other restriction is that we don't have support for live migration of the storage itself. So CSI does uh, support clone, uh, but not while the workload is, is, is uh, running. So we will need some mechanism that say, okay, the copy has finished, then now swap the old volumes with the new one. So these are the two major features that are not present in Kubernetes and in CSI. So how do we, how are we implement this feature? So something that I really want to stress is that we are trying to have a declarative API. So this was a key uh, concept uh, during the design of this feature because we want to be GitOps compatible. So we always want to um, have a declaration, so like YAML that describes your VM. So um, we try to implement this not in an imperative way. So um, in order to do this, um, we uh, trigger um, the change when there is a change in the uh, volume set. So you can see an example on the bottom. So on the left, um, we have two volumes with uh, source PVC1 and source PVC2, and we want to um, change uh, the set to destination PVC1 and 2. So however, uh, when we change the volume set, uh, this could be interpreted in multiple ways. So I can think, for example, of replacing a PVC with another, or maybe, um, migrating from source pvc1 for example to destination pvc1 
and something that could be done in the future. Some modification can be interpreted as an odd plug. So in order to um, understand uh, in a declarative way uh, the kind of change that we want to do on the volume set, we have introduced a new field that has this, uh, that can take um, right now to value either replacement or migration. So here you can see in a full example. Um, so on the left, we have uh, the um, snippet with the very simple virtual machine. So we have a um, data volume template with source. So uh, the original storage as access mode read write once is from of file system mode. It, ha it has two gigabyte of storage and the storage class is local. And of course we have this data volume in the volume section. So I want to migrate this storage to a new uh, kind of volume. Uh, so this is, for example, a blank uh, data volume. And we can see here that we, I can change the access mode, the um, storage uh, size, and the storage class, for example. So I can apply the new, uh, a new uh, updated update. Uh, what I need to specify is that they change its uh, update volume strategy equals to migration. I am setting the data volume template to empty because data volume needs to have a reference directly into the volumes and I'm actually changing in the volume section the name of the data volume. So basically with this update, we are going to trigger um, the volume migration. So uh, value migration actually relies on an already existing feature that QWERT has called the workflow updaters and live updates. So basically we have a controller that is triggered one, once one of the live updatable field is changed. So in this case, the volume set. Then we set a condition change on the VMI and then the workload updater uh, see this condition and trigger the migration with the updated VMI. Uh, so under the hood, basically, um, volume migration is using um, VM live migration. So how does this work? So as I mentioned, is the restriction in Kubernetes um, Either uh, we need to restart the pod or we need to pod. And this is actually how live migration works in Kuber. So in this case, um, during live migration, the destination virt launcher pod will directly have has access to the new storage. Um, the virt launcher in the source will basically replace in the migration XML the source destination vol the, the source volume with the destination one. Uh, then we use blob migration and basically we rely on QMU blob jobs in order to fully copy the storage to the destination. Um, so volume migration can take several um, maybe hours, especially if you have um, Anyway, sometime if you, especially if you have terabytes of data to copy. So something that we needed um, was a, me a mechanism to cancel the, um, the migration. Um, so this needs also to be done uh, declarative. Um, so in order to um, interpret a change as a cancellation, basically, um, we uh, did it in a way, basically you need to um, restore the original volume set. So on the right, you can see an example. So basically I have an original set with the source PVC. Then when I change uh, the claim name to destination PVC, this triggers the volume migration. And if for any reason I want to cancel the migration, basically I need to apply the old uh, specification. And this basically will 
uh, delete the migration and remove um, the change condition on EVMI. So what are the current limitations and what is the future? Um, so we don't support all, all kind of volume and disk. This is a very recent feature that has landed in 4.3. So we plan to add uh, and extend this feature to support, for example, LAN or hot plug disk. Um, it would, an interesting feature would be moving from ephemeral to persistent storage. So for example, um, from container disk to PVC. Um, a current limitation for QWERT is that we support uh, VM live migration only on different nodes. And this unfortunately affects also uh, volume migration. Um, so today we can always we can only migrate the storage on into a different um, host. Um, so this is something uh, that we could we could add in the future. Um, so today you can migrate to a larger storage. However, um, the um, file system of a VM is not automatically resized to fit uh, uh, the larger volume. So this was a limitation that's in, uh, that was delivered uh, in Reddit recently uh, upstream, and we basically need to, to um, add this, uh, this functionality also in Hubert. So um, volume migration implements a very basic API uh, so, for example, it doesn't deal with uh, PVC creation and deletion. Um, so, we thought this API could be used with some overlaying tooling that, for example, plan the migration. Um, Examples of these are Crane from, from Conveyor. So, this is still some work uh, that is done on top of this feature. So now it's demo time. Uh, I will switch to my um, terminal. I hope you can get. Um, so first of all, we are uh, uh, applying a very simple VM, as we saw in the in the in the example with the data volume. Um, this VM is already running. We can try to access it to see how um, it looks, our guest looks like. So it's a Fedora um, guest. We can have a look to uh, the disk. So it has a, a partition of five gigabytes. And we can try to write some, some file to see that uh, it's still there after the migration. Okay, so the destination storage will be a data volume blank uh, with a different uh, access mode, read by many, will be a block, a 10 gigabyte storage, and a different storage class. So the difference between the update that I'm going to apply are visible here. So we can see that there are two. Um, I will change the claim name, the data volume name. Uh, on the left, we have the source, uh, the original VM with the data volume template. And on the right, we have the update. update. So uh, I remove the update volume, uh, the data volume template, and we have the update volume strategy equals to migration. So uh, when I apply this, uh, um, definition, we can see what is going on. So first of all, we can see that there is um, a volume migration object that has been created by the workload updater that is running. And on the top, we can see that there are two uh, weird launcher pods. Uh, this is basically um, because the migration is, is ongoing. So when the migration completes, uh, we have one, one pod in completed state and the new one is up and running. So we can take a look uh, to the new virtual launcher pod. 
and to meet volume set. So, okay, this is ready. Um, so we can see in the volume set, this is now uh, using uh, the destination data volume. So we have been able to switch uh, uh, to the new, new volume. So uh, to finish uh, the demo, um, we can have a look again inside the gas. We can take a look to the partition. So this is still five gigabytes because we are, we, we need to, to enable Qvert to extend and resize the partition. And you can see that in the file, uh, we, we have the file that we have written previously. Okay, so this is how volume migration works. And uh, do you have any questions? Okay, I'm seeing some questions. Um, so uh, one question is on the volume map create strategy if we initiate the volume migration how both service will migrate um i'm not sure about the question um what do you mean with um pod service uh, the, the API is from virtualization, so um, the update strategy and volume migration is implemented on, on the end. Yeah, okay, Alexander already asked. Um, Do we have any other questions or did I miss something? Okay, there is still another question. Sorry if you already replied to the, to the chat. Why migration works with local storage or any other centralized storage? It works with any storage. Um, it's a full copy, so you can, you can use shared storage or you can use local storage. As I mentioned, there is a restriction on live migration um, that you need to migrate to another storage. But this is uh, because um, Kuber doesn't support uh, to migrate to the same node yet. But this is not uh, a restriction from, for storage migration. So if we um, develop the feature and allow the two bit launcher pod to be scheduled on the same node, then it will be possible also to migrate to the same to the same host. So uh, there is a question why it's not possible to migrate the VM storage in the same uh, Kubernetes node. Um, this is because um, Kubert doesn't implement it yet. So for example, there is a on the, on the destination of virtual launcher pod, there is an anti-affinity uh, um, set in order to schedule it to another node. And it's uh, because how we implement the migration proxy. So um, Qvert has a migration proxy to connect the two liver in the two pod. And this is currently only supporting TCP on another, on another node. So we need to extend and be able to uh, connect the two nodes on the same, on the same host. So it's uh, some development uh, uh, effort that we need to put in place if we want to support this. Um, so there is another question, what is the process of migrating a VM from VMware to Qvert? And what sort of workload you can migrate to Qvert? So this is a more generic question. Uh, this is not covered by this feature. Um, you will need to, uh, to, to use an additional tool. So value migration uh, is only, only for supporting um, migrating storage used by an already existing Qubert VM. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so there is again another question always. No, okay, it's always about uh, volume migration. Any other question? That I might also have missed. Yeah, um, as Alexander asked in the chat, uh, I think what I just thought about uh, VMware and the Cube, the volume migration all the support. Uh, um, is support between Cuber and Yam, I think, answered that question. Or at least it's out of scope of this presentation. This is not what it's about. Okay, um, anyway, if any of you have for the past, we can continue to discuss in the chat, or you can reach me on Slack uh, um, or, e or by email. Uh, I'm available there as well. So many thanks for your attention.